It's uh, very exciting to be here, uh, echoing what George said. Uh, Jack, it's so exciting, I learned so much, and, and the power of this program of, of your report is really surprising. Because I thought, I love the, the pen and cam, I, I use it all the time for my patients, especially prior to refractive surgery, tracking keratoconus. And I felt like, okay, this technology is fantastic, it works great, and to have a new report have so much information that wasn't available before is, was surprising and exciting all at the same time. Uh, so I'm gonna share a case uh, uh, that I think might be interesting. So this is, uh, when, I, when I evaluate my patients, I, t I always use a Placido Disc technology, um, and also I love the Penicam. And so just, what do you guys think about this patient? I'll ask the audience, I'll ask my, my, uh, my illustrious uh, panel here. This is a 30-year-old female interested in refractive surgery, and uh, this is the Magellan topographer. Um, you can see the IS ratio uh, is uh, 0.46, I believe, and, um, and let's see. It looks pretty normal. What do you guys think? Anything worrisome in this patient? 30-year-old wants LASIK. Uh, let's say they're a low myope. Looks, looks, it looks good. So again, there's a Placido disc, and, and this is what a lot of physicians have in their practice to primarily screen patients. Um, this is the same eye, uh, the Penicam. So any thoughts? This is just a regular Penicam map that we've used previously. Does this look normal, abnormal? What do you think here? Apex looks a little off to the side. Right, it's right. Broken, so the broken Myers, asymmetric, and, uh, and a little steep. And 46 side would, I would be a little suspicious. Right, so it's interesting that the Placido Disc and the Penicam are coming up a little different, but the Penicam, uh, it definitely looks a little suspicious, but it's, it's again the power of the holiday report, which I think is gonna really help us uh, nail this as what this case is. Um, I love the, the, uh, the percentage thickness increase map, which is um, one of the reports the Penicam provides. You can see it's in this side, it's a little bit abnormal. It's, uh, we wanna really be right in the middle between the three dot, the, the dotted lines, and this is coming out just below it, suggesting that the cornea essentially is a little bit thinner. Um, and as it goes towards the periphery. So this was also another warning sign. This is what I use in the past as helping be concerned, okay, maybe this eye is not normal. And so now this is the holiday report. Um, and so again, there's a lot of information all at once. Um, that's always a challenge because you know you love, uh, there's a lot of information. I, oh, I want each of these screens blown up to see really in detail, uh, but we'll try to go through that and, and hopefully we can again help us better understand this case. Uh, so the first thing is uh, with this report, it shows us the, um, the sagittal and then also the tangential view. And I, I have to be honest, um, who uses the tangential view normally in, in their screening of patients? Everyone? No one? Right, I've never ever even looked at the tangential view uh, prior to getting this map and I didn't quite understand its, its value and its use, but what Jack is pointing out that it's, it actually can really help us. And maybe you want to point out, Jack, not a single person here uses tangential view, so why should we pay attention to it here? Well, the only thing that the tensional ventral view does is it shows you where the cap of the cone is if it's conus. Okay. And you can't see that on an axial power map. It's more sensitive. Right, you can see that area which is that yellow um, on the sagittal views is coming up a little bit more orange, so just a little bit more war uh, as a warning sign. Again, I think we're gonna all need to get experience with the tangential view. I, I don't have any experience, I've never really paid attention to it, uh, but I think looking at some of the cases using this uh, map, I've, I started uh, this report, I've started learning more about it, and I think it could be quite helpful for these, especially in these borderline cases. Uh, one th another thing that's pointed out is the uh, location of the um, uh, thinnest part of the cornea. Um, you know, obviously we want it to be more central. Jack, you want to, again, comment on, on this particular case? Um, is it central enough? How do you know if the, cent the, the central, the thinnest part is, is normal or abnormal? Well, that's where that, it turns yellow actually on the thing when it gets over 0.66, because that's two standard deviations from the mean. But right. the average is between 0.1 and 0.2. So that value, when it gets over about 0.4, you worry about, but over 0.6 is almost diagnostic. Uh, but basically anything over 0.2 is unusual. Okay, perfect, perfect. So again, we're gonna learn a lot from this map. Um, and then we again have the uh, relative, uh, the relative pachymetry, and uh, you can see that where I'm pointing out here is this um, percentage, and this is, I guess, the thinnest part. How do you want to describe the, this? So this is the relative uh, pachymetry. Yeah. Well, again, yellow is suspicious and red is uh, dangerous, and that's orange right there in that area that's the same yellow on the other side. Right. So basically, you look in and say, gee, that's orange. It corresponds to where the yellow and orange is on the elevation posterior map, and it's at the same exact place that the cap 
on the uh, tangential map. Absolutely. So it's just quite interesting. And then if you go, um, if you look at the uh, central, I guess the uh, front elevation, the front elevation is completely normal. So all green, nothing is abnormal. So, so again, what's happened, as Jack pointed out, and I think we all know, in keratoconus, the first thing that starts happening is, as the cornea bulges, the epithelium over the cone starts to thin. And that's why this elevation map is, looks very normal. That's why the probably the uh, placido disc topography came out so normal is because they're sitting, so it's hiding or masking early keratoconus. Um, and so that's helpful. Then there's uh, some other parameters as well, just showing you the, uh, the other uh, EKR map just for you know, completeness. Um, and this is the other eye. So I kind of obviously knew that to be suspicious because the right eye has obvious keratoconus. Um, and so obviously I was paying attention. But again, if you just had the placido disc, you would call the left eye normal. Um, and not realize that this eye already has early keratoconus. Um, this is the right and left with the uh, penicam. And then this is looking at the holiday report. Um, again, the same information, but in the, in the right eye, which has obvious keratoconus. Well, and you notice now, look at that tangential map. You see how the area for the axial map is large and bigger and actually goes up into the center. But on that lower uh, tangential map, you can see exactly where the nipple of the cone is. You see it's exactly where on the relative pachymetry map the highest value is, and it's exactly where the protrusion on the back surface. So all three of them correspond, and on that previous one, it wasn't as apparent, but it was always suspicious there. So you can see how the tangential map can help you out. Right, yeah, I thought this was all fascinating, how it all lined up so nicely uh, in this case. and. Uh, so I thought that was very helpful. Um, again, here's some other, uh, other information reports. If your patient was scheduled for cataract surgery, uh, that's the EKR information to help figure out the case you may use. And that's it. Back up on that, too, because I want to see what that, to the, yeah, right there, 45, 48, 47, yeah. Right. You notice that uh, that was the other thing. The EKR 65, we don't have to go in time to details, but the point is if you look in that lower half left-hand corner at the distribution down there, if you take the average of all of those powers, you come up where that little bitty peak in the middle is. But that's not what the patient looks through. They actually end up looking through that lower part down there with the peak, and the EKR 65 looks for that area, and so that's why it's almost a diopter and a half less than the right. mean power over the four and a half millimeter zone. Perfect, exactly. So it's all fantastic information, and so uh, I think it's a really useful tool and technology. And so, uh, for those who use a Pentacam, uh, start looking at this report. I think we'll all learn more and more over time. So thank you very much. Yes, sir.